Okay, great. Thank you all for joining us today. It's great to have you with us for this webinar. As we all know, while access to improved water sources has increased across sub-Saharan Africa in recent years, concerns have been raised over the extent to which these water sources, specifically hand pump equipped boreholes, are able to provide a reliable and safe water supply in the medium to long term. As I outlined in my recent blogs, when looking to remedy these failures, we must not only ensure that high quality operations and maintenance work is possible, but we must also ensure that high quality boreholes are sited and drilled in the first instance. During my PhD, I became very interested in understanding the latter, and more specifically, the factors that affect the quality of work conducted during siting and drilling. As a part of my PhD, I spent time in Uganda, researching the borehole siting and drilling processes in the country. I was interested in understanding how the private sector operates, how consultants and drilling contractors are procured, their contract types, and the level of government support for implementing agencies, consultants, and drilling contractors. Within this, I was particularly interested in understanding the ways in which these aspects affect the quality of work conducted during borehole siting and drilling. In this presentation, I'll explain a few of the key findings from this research and outline the ways in which each are thought to be affecting the quality of the siting and drilling work in Uganda. The aim of this presentation is not simply to present the case of Uganda, but to generate discussion among us all, firstly around the importance of high quality siting and drilling work, and secondly around the ways in which aspects such as contract type, procurement processes, access to the necessary data, and private sector regulation can affect the quality of implementation. I first want to talk about contract types and how the type of contract used is thought to be affecting the quality of the siting and drilling work in Uganda. As many of us will be aware, drilling is often conducted under a BOQ contract or a turnkey contract. Under a BOQ contract, a consultant conducts the siting work and a driller then drills. Because the consultant tells the driller where to drill, the driller is typically paid for the work done and materials used, whether the borehole is successful or not. Conversely, under a turnkey contract, the driller is responsible for the siting and drilling work. If the borehole is successful, the driller is typically paid a lump sum price that was specified in their contract, regardless of the cost incurred on site. If, however, the borehole is unsuccessful, the driller is typically not paid at all as they were the ones responsible for siting the borehole. The latter is often referred to as a lump sum, no water, no pay contract. Up to the early 2000s, BOQ contracts, which are also known as measurement contracts, were the norm in Uganda. In the mid 2000s, however, many district local government offices and NGOs noticed that a number of unsuccessful boreholes were being drilled when consultants were conducting the siting work. Unsuccessful boreholes were typically blamed on the quality of the consultant's siting work with briefcase consultants having flooded the market. Because of the low prices they offered, coupled with a lack of regulation, these consultants were gaining siting contracts. Paying per BOQ for unsuccessful boreholes, however, was challenging. As a result, many district local government offices and NGOs moved to turnkey contracts, as doing so meant they would no longer have to procure the consultant and they would no longer have to directly pay for unsuccessful boreholes. During my research, I found that a number of implementing agencies are using turnkey contracts. During my time in Uganda, for example, I interviewed 29 implementing agencies. 26 of these 29 were procuring the private sector for the implementation work, and 19 of these 26 were using turnkey contracts for the siting and drilling work and paying the driller via lump sum, no water, no pay payment terms. The remaining seven implementing agencies were using BOQ contracts. While turnkey contracts have simplified the procurement process and contract management process in Uganda, several concerns are raised among those interviewed around the quality of work that is conducted when these contracts are used. Many of these concerns stem from the lump sum, no water, no pay payment terms. There were reports, for example, of boreholes being sited in areas where the driller is guaranteed to find water, for example, in valley areas, near swamps and near rivers, as doing so ensures that they'll be paid. While this makes sense, such areas are prone to pollution and community access problems in the rainy months. 
There were also reports of drillers taking shortcuts on site in an attempt to save money and help recover the losses from the unsuccessful boreholes they weren't paid for. The shortcuts reported including using low quality or hydrogeologically inappropriate materials, for example, GI rising mains rather than stainless steel or UPVC in, a, in acidic groundwater areas, or stopping drilling at the first water strike. There were also reports of drillers skewing the pump test data or cutting the pump test time short in order to mask low yielding sites they otherwise wouldn't be paid for. While many of these shortcuts could be prevented if there is adequate supervision on site, full-time supervision by a trained hydrogeolog hydrogeologist was found to be rare when turnkey contracts are used. Furthermore, the need for drilling contractors to take the above shortcuts is exacerbated by the fact that in many cases, the lump sum price drillers are paid for unsuccessful boreholes is reportedly too low in the first instance, with prices having remained relatively stable over the last 10 years. The quality of work issues mentioned here led the Ministry of Water and the Environment to release a directive in January 2017 discouraging the use of turnkey contracts. However, at the time that I conducted this research, a few months after this directive was issued, the majority of the implementing agencies I interviewed were still using turnkey contracts. Moving on, in addition to contract type, the skill set of those conducting the siting and drilling work is also important when considering the quality of the implementation work. While Uganda has a stable consultancy and drilling sector with over 65 licensed consultants and 40 licensed drillers, some of the most experienced consultants and drilling contractors that I interviewed while I was in Uganda are no longer willing to bid for district local government contracts. When I asked these consultants and drilling contractors uh, why they are no longer willing to work for districts, Four issues were noted, all of which stem from the district procurement and contract management processes. There is firstly the issue of price. A number of the consultants and drillers interviewed are dissatis dissatisfied with the prices that districts are willing to pay compared to that of NGOs. The consultants interviewed, for example, stated that districts are typically willing to pay one to two million shillings for siting and supervision while NGOs are typically willing to pay 2.5 to 3.5 million shillings for the same work. The price districts are willing to pay is reportedly not realistic, and as a result, these consultants would have to take shortcuts in their work. The same issues were reported among the drillers who are no longer willing to work for districts. These consultants and drillers reported that they are not willing to take, sh take shortcuts in their work as they don't believe that this is fair for communities and they don't want to tarnish the reputation of their companies. Secondly, a number of the districts I interviewed are misusing the lump sum, no water, no pay payment terms I mentioned earlier. As I explained, if a borehole is successful, the driller should be paid the full lump sum price. However, a number of districts interviewed are only paying for the actual work done and materials used when the borehole is successful. Without full lump sum payment, however, drillers are unable to recover for the losses from unsuccessful boreholes that they were not paid for. Thirdly, demands for bribes are reportedly common when bidding for district contracts. When a bribe needs to be paid, consultants and drillers struggle to account for this cost. If they account for this cost in their quote, the quote will be too high and as a result, they will not win the contract. If, however, they do not account for the price of the bribe in their quote, the consultant or driller will need to recover this cost at some stage, usually through taking shortcuts on site. And as I mentioned earlier, these consultants and drillers are simply not willing to do so. Lastly, receiving the full payment for districts from districts for completed works can reportedly be challenging, with several drillers reporting that in some cases, they had to wait over a year to receive their full payment. This makes business difficult. It is much easier to only work for NGOs who are known for paying on time. What was interesting during my research is that I found that some districts are now beginning to notice that certain consultants and drillers have stopped bidding for their work and are now worried about the quality of work that is being conducted by those who do bid for their contracts. One district water officer, for example, reported they have lost some really good drillers in recent years because the serious drillers prefer to work for NGOs 
as NGOs are known for being more transparent and for paying a sufficient amount of money for the work that needs to be done. This district water officer went on to explain that he, as a technical person, would prefer to hire these more experienced and more serious drillers, but it is hard to pay them the same rates as the NGOs do because they don't want the district to lose money. Moving on, the final two points I'd like to discuss for Uganda are really positive. The first is that of groundwater data. As many of you will be aware, access to detailed and accurate groundwater information can greatly aid the siting and borehole design, and therefore the overall quality of the water point. Significant steps have been taken in recent years to increase access to detailed groundwater data in Uganda. Much of this began in 2000 when the Director of Water Resources and Management began a nationwide groundwater mapping project. Using data for, from the borehole completion reports that drilling contractors are required to submit every quarter, DWRM has developed a series of maps for each district. These include a recommended water source technology map, a hydrogeological condition map, a groundwater quality map, and a groundwater potential map, which estimates drilling success rates. There are other maps alongside this. Uh, however, this slide here shows the groundwater potential map for Kabale district. The magnitude of these maps and the level of detail they capture is remarkable. These maps have become a great asset for district local governments, NGOs, and others responsible for water point siting and construction. Lastly, in addition to the mapping efforts, DWRM has also strongly advocated for private sector regulation to increase the quality of the implementation work. Regulation efforts began in 1999 with the introduction of drilling contract licenses. In addition to these drilling contract licenses, in recent years, DWRM recognised the essential need to extend this licensing system to consultants, given the number of brief briefcase consultants in the country. Before consultant licensing was introduced, when consultants bidded for the siting and the supervision work, evaluation teams within implementing agencies often had no, no way of identifying those who were truly qualified for this work and those whose bidding documents were fake. Poor quality work then proceeded as briefcase consultants began winning contracts. And as I mentioned earlier, this was one of the main reasons that a number of the implementing agencies that I interviewed turned to turnkey contracts in the mid-2000s. To address this problem and provide guidance for evaluation teams, DWRM started issuing consultant licenses in 2016. To gain a license, consultants must submit the academic documents, CV, and an overview of past work. They must also have hydrogeology specific qualifications. The geology qualifications alone are not sufficient. Premises and equipment are then assessed and a practical assessment and interview are conducted. This process has proved effective as by July 2018, licenses have been issued to 65 individuals and 15 firms. It is hoped this new licensing system will increase confidence within implementing agencies in the consultant ability and that they'll start to procure consultants again for the siting and the supervision work. So as we can see from the results of this research, there's a lot that we need to think about when looking to ensure that high quality implementation work is conducted during rural water supply projects. There's a lot that I wasn't able to touch on in this presentation that I'm sure that those of you attending will be able to contribute. I hope this presentation has been useful for all of those listening, and I'd now like to turn it back to the moderator. Thank you.